All right, we have more breaking news to get to right now. The attorney for Victor Hill is speaking as we speak. Let's listen in right now. And see how people are living in their own feces, see how rats are in there, see how people are shanking one another, which didn't take place at the Clayton County Jail under the leadership of, of Victor Hill. And we wanted to make sure that we pointed those things to her honor's attention. And obviously, you saw the sentence was drastically reduced. Um, we had hoped that there would be no incarceration, um, but the drastic reduction was uh, a sharp contrast to that which federal probation and that which the U.S. Attorney's Office was, was asking for. Um, if there's any questions, if not. Do you ask for the exercise of appeal? Yes, yeah, so uh, there is 100% going to be an appeal. Uh, there's going to be an appeal on several grounds, uh, but one of one of which is the fact, if you look at the filings, that there's no notice. So notice means that you know that something that you're doing could be a crime, right? You know if you go into a bank and you have a gun and you ask for the money, that's robbery, right? You know if you take a gun and you shoot somebody, that is assault or could be murder. But there is no notice in the correctional facilities, both locally or anywhere in the United States, that if you use a legally purchased restraint chair, right, which two American corporations sell all over the country, thousands and thousands of them, that you can be prosecuted. Remember that there could have, could have been a consent decree, right? Very simply, the Department of Justice could have come in and said, Sheriff Hill, we think you're doing this wrong. We want you to either suspend or modify your use over the next 12 or 18 months. They chose not to do that. And they chose to just prosecute him. That is a notice issue. And to us, that's a violation of due process that will be appealed. And of course, the issue that jumps out of all of you that were with us, which is that the jury was out for four days and the juror that held out was brought out for individual questioning, which was uh, somewhat unheard of um, in my experience. And the 11th Circuit also points out the kind of uh, uniqueness and, and weirdness of that. Can you talk about your concerns about where the uh, sheriff will be incarcerated? Well, we just want to make sure that he goes to what's called a minimum security camp. Um, and that is that he is in the most secure setting possible. He is a law enforcement officer, and um, he has been dealing with people charged, charged with crimes, both as an elected sheriff and as a homicide detective. And so you don't know when, given that he's been in law enforcement, who he's going to encounter in a correctional facility, and he's going to have somewhat of a target. And we want to make sure that he is in as much a secure and safe setting as possible. Sure. So uh, first, let me say that we had um, a, a lot of letters that were uh, sent to the court, and we receive a lot of letters all the time. And some of them are on point and some aren't. So we have to kind of select through and pick uh, the ones that seem most appropriate and are going to be most helpful. In this case, for her honor, Judge Ross, uh, to help her. Um, deliberate and make a decision as to sentencing. And she specifically talked about those letters. So those letters were, for example, people from um, homeowners associations that talked about the fact that Victor Hill, albeit a, a, an elected sheriff that you think is you know, worried about the jail and, and arresting people, would come out to a homeowners association and talk to the homeowners association about what he can do in his sheriff's department to make the community and their neighborhood safer. Um, we had letters from people that said they literally drove down the road and saw the sheriff's car and Victor Hill on the side of a street picking up trash. Um, we had letters from and people that were there to testify that had actually been detainees. They'd actually been in the Clayton County Jail and were no longer using illegal substances, narcotics, um, because of the influence and the structure that they say that they received um, while in the Clayton County Jail. Um, we had a very famous person in the music industry, a gospel singer, um, that talked about the citizen, um, Victor Hill, the sheriff and citizen, um, how he heard about the passing of one of her relatives and made sure that he was there to support her family. We had several of those um, people that were somewhat familiar with him, but had a sick or dying or a deceased relative and how as the sheriff, he came to make sure that they and their family members were, were safe healthy and secure and try to see what he can do during that difficult time. That's unique. Um, we have 159 counties in this state. 
Um, I challenge you to find any of the other 158 sheriffs that are right now. We are listening in, in live as the attorney for Clayton County Sheriff Victor Hill speaks about the decision that just came down from a judge to find Hill guilty on federal abuse charges. We'll continue to update this story on 11alive.com, but he's saying they do plan to appeal.